So, I had a conversation the other day. Kind of went back and forth with regards to brining steak. Now, if you've watched, you know I'm a purist when it comes to my beef. I, you know, I like a good spice rub on it. Sometimes I just like salt and pepper. I'm not really someone that's into marinating and brining and things like that. I've done it a few times, mostly poor poultry, you know, stuff like that. Beef, on the other hand, I cut it off, I season it, I cook it. So, this goes against everything I would typically believe. But, in order to be a good cook, in my opinion, you have to have an open mind. I mean, I have my set ways, but I'm always open. I will at least give it a shot. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today. So I did do the, a video on this, um, but the video got messed up and I used ribeye. Um, so I'm gonna do it differently this time, uh, which, so I'm kind of actually glad that the video got screwed up. Um, just technical difficulties, it was a, it was a mess. But anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hack off a couple of fresh steaks, got us a nice uh, um, beef strip loin here. It's a whole strip loin. We're gonna cut off a nice um, two finger or so New York strip steaks. We're going to wet brine one of them. We're gonna dry brine one of them. And we are going to just cook one. Simple rub, simple everything. We're gonna keep the rub exactly the same except for the fact on the regular steak, it will be the same rub, the same blend, except I'm going to be putting salt and pe salt in that one because you gotta have salt, you know what I mean? Um, so, and we're gonna see what's up. I'm gonna do a little taste test here. Uh, could have my beautiful wife help me out doing a taste test. She'll always tell me, um, she'll tell me, no, that's shit. And uh, I can always trust her. So, let's do it. Here's our beautiful strip loin. So what we're gonna do is, this end over here is nice and fat. I have ideas for that one, so I'm not gonna cut that end. But we have a nice end over here, this guy here, and we're gonna take just a couple of fingers off, you know what I mean? So, we're gonna go right down, I'm gonna leave this edge, on it the way it is just like so and we're gonna go two fingers on this and just making sure I got my marks right and then we'll go on through so this here is going to be oh, one of our strip loins that we do so we need two more of these guys Ooh, that's another nice one. And, hey, no matter how this turns out, I get to eat some seriously good steak. That's all I know. So what could possibly go wrong, right? And that's that. So here we have even size. Nice cuts. ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna finish the butchering this thing up and uh, get it vac sealed, and then we'll get back here. We'll make our wet brine, we'll make our dry brine, and I'm actually gonna put this in a bag as well, because typically I would just put it in the fridge, I'd open air it for a little bit, just to let it dry up. But I don't want the drying out, since the other two aren't aren't really gonna be like that. I'm gonna keep try to keep it all even here. I'm gonna try to keep some type of control in it just to um just to see so we'll be back all right guys here we are so get the rest all butchered back sealed and put in the freezer so this is what we got we got one strip two strip Three strip. So, first off, 
I want to treat these just like I would any other time. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to do a little trimming. I don't want the fat off of this because they're New York strips. You got to have that kind of stuff. But there is that stringy fat on the outside I don't want. So I want to just trim all that right off so I have that nice, beautiful, white, soft fat that'll all render. And New York strips always break it. That tendon that's in there underneath that fat, when you cook your steak, especially like lower grade, you'll see them curl up, that's why. It's that fat tendon that tightens up, causes that steak to bowl, you know, bowl up on you. So, I always do it. Just, I just found it uh, the best thing to do. This little back corner here, he's gonna go to. The rest of that, I'll eat it. Again, I'm gonna lose this guy. And just the stringy stuff on the outside. Ooh, got a little deep on that one. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Looking pretty good. And again, same thing here. Just trim that guy right around, just like that. All right. Beautiful. Okay. So here we got our strips. Now first, let's do our wet brine. Say it again, this goes against everything I believe, but in the name of science, and, you know, delicious steaks, man. I'm all for them, you know. I'm going to use a Ziploc for this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a bowl, which I already should have had out, but I don't. Because that would be preparedness. And it's not really my deal. Now... This is probably going to affect the test, but I cannot, in my soul, put a steak in water. So I'm going to use beef stock. There's already some sodium in it. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna, you know, work for the flavor side of things, you know, but I just can't put a beautiful steak in water. Sorry guys. So I'm gonna use some beef broth. And I think I might need a little bit more than that. Give me one second. If I have any more. Okay, well. I see it. I was gonna say, man, I'm always prepared. Come on. All right. So, probably looking at about two cups. Say so at about a half, yeah, maybe a little heavy on the two cups. <clears throat> now, typically, when I do any brining, I just use. I have some, I have an old box of kosher salt that I just, it's just been in the cupboard forever. But I don't think it tastes the same as my Muldon. So I am gonna use the Muldon for the brining just to try and keep things evil or even. And uh, you know, cause that's what I'm gonna be using on the rest of the steaks. So we got about two and a half cups there. And what I'm gonna do, is put about a half cup. Oh man, this is painful, guys. 
can't tell you how much this hurts me. A half cup of salt. Ouch. Ouch. And we're going to give her a good mix. Just try to get that all in there. Make sure it's mixed up. Try to dissolve it. Flake will definitely dissolve much easier than any other type. I mean, typically you can heat this up, you know, and let it cool back down, but eh, I ain't going through all that. Just not doing it. Now, see, at this point, if this was all I was doing, I would be adding some garlic in here. I would be adding some thyme in here. But that's not what we're doing. I'm already, I feel like I'm skewing the test towards the flavor side of things just by using the beef stock. But as far as I'm concerned, there's no other choice. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take our bag and get you up here a little bit. Give her a little hat roll up here. And throw this guy in. Oh boy. See you, buddy. Such a beautiful steak. Either way, I'm going to eat it. So, all right. Now, let's go on in. Just like that. There we got our strip. I'm gonna bleed air right from the beginning here because I don't need to mix it around or anything, you know. I do want air out of it, but I'm not gonna go through the whole getting a straw and things like that. I can push out enough. Like an old water bed, remember those? And that was like, that was the shit, man. You were a king if you had a waterbed. So, all right, guys. Our wet brine. Now, the other two are cake. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the same pan. Use my trusty. I know a lot of people use foil. I do not like putting my food on foil, man. I just, it's reactive. And just, uh, it's probably more of a personal preference, but I'm just a parchment kind of guy, man. And my rack, like so. All right, so let's put these guys up here. And let me wipe that. I don't pick up any of that smooge on the bottom of my pan. All right, so I thought about this actually, and I misspoke earlier. <clears throat> I'm not gonna put either of these in a bag. I'm gonna do my normal dry out in the fridge. You know, um, it's not really technically dry aging because it's only a couple days. I mean, if you wanna get real technical with terms. It is an actual dry brine without anything on it though. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm open air drying it. Let's call it that. So now this guy here, we are just gonna hit with salt right now and let it do a deep dive on this thing for the next 24 hours. So don't put, don't coat the whole steak with salt. You just wanna put as much salt as you would normally put on your steak. Now this is a thick cut, you know, so I'm not gonna be too easy on it, but I don't want it to be crazy salty either. So that's how we're gonna do that. And I am coating both sides as well as the edges. So let me just press them flakes in. Those flakes are gonna dissolve beautifully in there. Use both of my hands. Not on my game today, guys.
like so. Just give that a little extra loving. Let's get our edges, make sure we get it all. Because the other edges are gonna be exposed. The other edges in the, dry, in the wet brine one, they're all wrapped around it, so let's try to keep this fair. And of course you want it on the fat cap, you know, because that's living. Again, both my hands. Jesus. A little more generous on the fat cap side of things. And that's that. There is our salted steak. Eh, let's put a little more right here just because I, I felt like it needed it. This one, I'm just gonna let her hang out. So, that's what we got. Get these up here, it's for a visual thing. You know, production value. Just like that. So we have our wet brine, straight up, dry, it just open air dry and our dry brine. Into the fridge, that's it. I'd highly suggest if you do any of this stuff, like with me, I, I do this a lot. I'll, I'll put my steaks in the fridge. I'll just let them air dry. I've, I've let them air dry in the fridge for up to five days, man. But um, sometimes even longer. I would highly suggest though, you at least have a thing of baking soda in there opened up, you know, otherwise it will start taking on flavors. You start pressing your luck, you start getting into that whole uh, food safety shit. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. I haven't killed anybody yet. Haven't made anybody sick yet. So, you know, I got that going for me. But um, uh, either way, so that way it doesn't pull in any flavor if you got some something stinky in your fridge or whatever, you know, because it will. It will literally suck up flavor. So that's it. Going in the fridge. I'm going to do just overnight. Um, that even bothers me, uh, just going that long. But I want some, I want it to take. I mean, I know after f four, five, six hours, there's already gonna be a difference. Um, just because from back in the day when I used to season things, you know, I'm like, hey, you gotta season that stuff early. Let all that stuff sweat into your meat. And then there's a certain, there's a window of time that when you season your meat to when you cook it, there's a certain amount of time to where in a span, you're drying your meat out and you're not helping the flavor. It's, you know, cause all that moisture comes to the top of the meat. It pulls everything out and then it starts to suck back in. So if you don't give it the chance to suck back in, all you did was pull all the moisture out of your meat and you will dry it out like crazy, man. So, and not the good kind of dry. Uh, just a flavorless, dry, not tender piece of meat. So typically I've noticed over four hours, you need at least that, or you season it before you, before you put it on there. You know, I usually season it up, takes about what, 15, 20 minutes, something like that for whatever pit you're using to heat up, whether it's the pellet, whether it's a, uh, you know, wood, whatever you're doing, whether it's just a straight up charcoal grill you know, 15, 25 minutes, somewhere in there, toss them on there. But um, you pull it on, you put it on for an hour, you put it on for two hours, you're just not gonna get the same results. That's just my personal experience, you know, and there's some science in that shit too. But um, it's, uh, you know, just doesn't work well. So, but I am gonna let these just go overnight and uh, we're gonna see what happens. So here we go. Either way, we're eating steak, so. 24 hours later. Well, it's actually a little bit longer. I didn't take them out earlier. But this is what we got. Oh, Christ, the dogs. Here we have our salt brine. Here we have our straight up open air. And here we have our wet brine. Just took it out of the bag, patted it off. That's it. So, as you can see, the um, 
just open air definitely has like a more, you know, vibrant red where the salt brides definitely feels firmer. Darker red. And this one here, the wet brine, is actually, it doesn't look it, but it's very firm. And it, you know, looks gray. So, but, um, so I'm just going to uh, let these sit here just for a second. And um, like I said, I got them patted dry. We're gonna rub them and uh, just let them hang out while I get the grill lit, so. This is what we got going on for our rub. I did two of them. I did two of them yesterday. One of them with salt, one of them without. So, let me grab uh, dual bowls here. Here's our no salt. And here's our salt. This is both a uh, culmination of uh, meat meth and the pepper blend that I um, made for the kippered beefsteak. So the meat meth is, I did a recipe, on, I did a video on that. You can just search meat, meat meth. And then um, the pepper blend is in my kippered beefsteak video. I know a lot of people have been asking me, I'll put them both together because this is pretty much what I've been using lately. It's, it's awesome, seriously awesome. So, all right, well let's put these in order then. So we have our open air, salt, dry blind, dry brined, dry brined, wet brined. So, dry brined, give her some loving. Nice thick steaks, I plan on slicing them, so I'm going hard. Same thing with the wet. Everything's the same. This is all made same batch. And I just added the salt to the other one. So that way the rubs don't come into play. Nothing like that. And then a little salt. Oh man, you see the peppers and the nori and the, oh man, this stuff is so good guys, seriously. If you haven't yet, give it a shot, man. Change your life. It's good shit. Trying to keep it all on there. I don't have the time to let it sweat out, but it's just not to not play my reindeer games for me. That's all right, I'll tack them with a little bit on the other side with the big stuff. All the small stuff stayed in, but the, uh, a lot of the peppers and the nori and stuff did not. I could hear it, but that's what parchment paper's for. All right. All right, I'm gonna let these sweat out. Flip them over before, and then I can actually uh, hit the other side with a little bit of the fall off. You know what I mean? So, but well, let's let, let, let them chill, and uh, I'm gonna go light the smoke fire, 250. Let her get up, and uh, we'll cook some steaks. Right, so we're here. She's up at 250. A couple of things I just wanted to clarify real quick. I did not rinse them uh, because I don't feel there a need to. Um, I patted the wet one dry. The other one, I didn't eat crust and salt. I didn't cake with salt. I gave it the proper amount of salt that I would have had I just been salting it to cook it. You know what I mean? So there's no reason to rinse, no reason to any of that stuff. So, um, all right. So we got our, I got three probes in this because I want to make sure normally, you know, I just cook my steaks, but I figured I'd keep the probes in just to make sure everything is done. I'm assuming only logically is that, God damn flies, is that the, um, uh, wet brine one is going to cook much faster um, than the standard open air, and I'm sure the salt brine would actually cook faster too, uh, just because everything's kind of opened up inside of the meat, you know, it loosens everything, so um, the meat is going to, it's just going to cook faster. So I'm going to keep an eye on them, 
but uh, I'm putting them all at the same time. So first of all, we're gonna go with uh, probe one. That's gonna be our, just our straight up steak. Probe two. Oh man, these fireboard probes get tangled up so bad. It's ridiculous, man. They're like headphone wires. All right, uh, number two. That's gonna be our dry brine. And number three, if I can untangle it, is going to be our wet brine. So there we are. We're all starting off within 41 to 43 degrees. So let's do it. favorite brush my Oklahoma Joe long one. Oh, it was a sad story but it ended up breaking the thing it got slammed and it was it's it was just a whole mess so I'm super I'm, I'm devastated there was a moment of silence so I do got to get a new one but all right here we go I'm gonna set these guys right here in the center over the big flavorizer bar Try to keep everything even. I did flip them and uh, give them some love on the other side, like we talked about. Drop them in there. All right, guys. I'm gonna take them to, uh, I don't know, probably around 110, something like that. It's usually what I do. 110, 115. Um, I'm doing them on the smoke fire just for one it's just the easiest way to do it and two reverse sear man this thing shines at it it does it throws tons of flavor at it while you're smoking it and then you crank it up and it'll make a real good steak so that's why we're using this guy today we'll be back right, guys let's cook some steaks All right, guys, here we are. You can see the sticks. I'll point them out afterwards. We cannot. So this is my beautiful wife, and she's going to taste with me. So let's start with that one, babe. Do you want me to cut it? No. It's just then a little less than I'd like. Yeah, I know, but it probably looks like that. What but am I testing? What it tastes like, tenderness, just overall steak experience, dear. Okay. Are you going to eat that one? Yes. Okay. It is so salty. Yeah. Mm -mm. It is super salty. Oh my god. <laughs> like crazy salty. I can't eat this. I'm sorry. It's meat. I don't waste it. Okay. Woo. Oh. It's like a salt lick. That's awful. All right. Let's try this one, my dear. I feel like my taste buds are ruined. Yeah, we just totally closed our palates. All right. Okay. That's right. Here we go. For science. Ooh. Okay, this one's better. Yep. Yeah. Super tender. It's super tender. I'm just not getting much flavor. Look. That flavor. But I know what you're saying. But you're not, you, you like your steak rubs, you know. I mean, you're not a real big fan of just beef itself, you know, so. Yeah, that was not bad. No, not bad. All right, let's try this guy here. Okay, this is more of my temperature. Yes, I know. Super tender. Oh man, see? That's got flavor all the way through. That's a good steak. That's one's super good. So I'll eat that one. You can have that first one. I'm not eating that. I can go in the garbage. You can get that as a dog. 
That's a good steak. So, so this one's got a good crust. So, but the only the flavor is only in the crust. This one, the flavor is always the meat. That one is garbage. Do you want to know what's funny? What? That is the wet brined one. I assumed it was going to be salty. I probably shouldn't have done 24 hours, but. I didn't notice any other benefits. It was the toughest out of all of them. Yes. It, everything. This right here was the dry brine one. Hmm. That this was just how I make my steaks. Yeah. All I did was season it before I cooked it. But the thing that's funny is this one is saltier than this one is. And this one is dry brine, which brine to me is salt. Um, well, it is, but it, so. sh it shouldn't have gone too much. And the r salt on this one was in the rub. So I would go option three. This one's okay. Like if I ate it like on a salad or yeah. I don't know, if I put barbecue sauce on it, sorry. Right. Um, this what? one is bad. What? It's so bad. Barbecue sauce? Yeah. Oh man, we need to talk. So funny enough, that is just straight up seasoned 15 minutes before I put it on the grill. Oh gee. <laughs> so skip the fanciness. Going through stick all this Stick with shit. the regular. No. Don't bother with the experiments. Just go with those. All right, guys. You heard it. I'm actually surprised. I I kind of had a feeling that the wet brine was going to be salty just because the 24 hours, I think, is too much. I, I don't think it needs it. You could probably do something like that for maybe five, six hours. But otherwise, it's way too much. It's like a salt lick. Um, but I'm really surprised that flavor wise and tenderness wise just the straight up steak cooked seasoned right before beat the dry brine so all right that's it that's all i got